fight against coronavirus intensifies in Nigeria, many people are becoming more aware of the threat the virus poses to the entire populace and community. Well, we do hope so. And since the environment and the people are inseparable, it becomes very important that the environment in which we live is well protected, sanitized, safeguarded, uh, disease-free, conducive, and comfortable for the well-being of all of us in Nigeria. Oh, yeah. So joining us now is uh, Dr. Femi Duwadiguki, uh, a chartered waste and environmental sustainability consultant. He's also the executive director at EcoVirides, environmental technology a Nigerian-based, globally recognized company rendering specialized services in waste and environmental management sector. It's a pleasure to talk to you. But, uh, uh, Femi, uh, we are increasingly seeing societies being disinfected. I mean, Nigerian society, I should say, Nigerian streets being disinfected. But do you think this measure, is it holistic enough it's just pockets of areas we're seeing. Yes. Um, thank you very much for that. The uh, question is, we need to do more. And in, or in a way to do more, we need to get to the local authority, that's the local government. We need to get to the grassroots. We cannot just select few areas to disinfect right now. We need to get it across board. And this is when we need uh, the local government to play their role in the grassroots. Because from the canals of Venice to the skies in China, we are beginning to see clearer waters and clearer skies. Uh, some people have said perhaps this is the only positive we might be seeing from a coronavirus as regards the, the environment. Has it taken this pandemic for us to learn a lesson on how to tackle climate change? And when you bring that home to Nigeria, are we likely to see these environmental benefits of coronavirus at this time, if any? Um, like I, I've said in other discussion before, that at the end of this uh, pandemic, I hope we take the positive of our personal hygiene serious. And like you said, uh, Nigeria, when it comes to climate change, there's a lot of uh, slow approach or no approach at all. But uh, I'm, I'm of the belief that at the end of this whole period, we would have learned one or two things that we need to do right. Like now, we are approaching the rainy season. Uh, I think it's the best time to begin to clear our canals and our drainages before the rain comes in full. Because we don't want to be dealing with uh, coronavirus and then be dealing with flood at the same time. I mean, um, I'm shocked that we're doing this now. I'm shocked that we're just disinfecting our streets. Uh, many years ago, most especially the time of the colonial rule in Nigeria, in the 50s and the 60s, there used to be a couple of people they call willy willy. Uh, willy willy in local parlance means those that come to check the house. And what these people did was to check homes, disinfect canals, <clears throat> and they were sponsored by the local governments then, or the local councils, disinfect canals, go to various restaurants, check the restaurant's sanitary condition, where the food is being prepared, give them a certification of hygiene. But we don't see all of that again. It looks as though, as we transited to uh, our own independent rule, all those structures, went out the drain with the British. Yes, you're correct. But um, let me say that we still have the Wole Wole, they are the uh, environmental health officers. They exist on paper, but not in practice. They are available in the offices. What you have just said is they're not doing what they should do, or they are not uh, being encouraged, or they're not at the right places like you said, in the past, they were being managed or disbursed at the uh, local authority, local government. But right now, you know, we have a lopsided system in Nigeria, and uh, the decadence has eaten deep across all sectors. It's not that we, st we still have the environmental health officers, but we need more presence. We have a challenge with waste disposal and open defecation in Nigeria. 
Uh, we cannot hide that fact. With coronavirus and the steps we are taking, uh, preventive measures, what would be your advice to individuals? Because this is not fight for government alone. Uh, while we decontaminate our buses and our bus stations and our streets and our communities, how do we contribute as individuals? Okay, as individual, we need to take our personal hygiene very serious. It is an holistic approach from everyone now, from every level, from the lower to the middle class, to the elite and to the uh, government. Every, all hands must be on deck now. And personally, we need to obey what I always call waste hierarchy. We need to minimize the waste we generate at this time, because like Lagos State is taking a bold step by decongesting the dump site, by telling the, um, the what we call the scavengers, the informal sector of people who scavenge at the dump site, to go away because of to avoid the further spread of the coronavirus, because the coronavirus is set to survive on some of these uh, items that they are scavenging for certain hours and days as well. So they've been told to stop operation. So in, in that, every individual at home now must be able to minimize the generation of their waste. Don't use what you don't need. Just do the needful. Explain more about the waste hierarchy you talked about. In the waste hierarchy, the most favorable is called minimization. That means you have to rethink. Do you really need it? Should you take it or not? And the second level is what we call reduce. So you need to reduce the amount of waste that you generate. And the third one is reuse. Even if you have to use it at all, you should use something you can reuse again, not what you just use and dump. And then it comes to re recycling. So e, the next one is recycling. So before you have, if you have exercised all the first three and you still generate waste, try and put it in your recycling receptacle so that it can be re recycled for another product. Then at the end of that, after that has been ex exceeded, you can do recovery. So you have done, go through all these before you now dispose. How do you reduce waste in Lagos with, with the size of the city itself? How do you reduce waste in Lagos? No, okay, the way to reduce waste in Lagos is from point of generation which is what I just explained, from point of generation, if every individual can reduce the amount of waste they generate, then it will come to an um, overall reduction for everyone. As it stands now, Lagos is set to generate about 10,000 uh, 10, tons of waste on a daily basis. How practicable is this? Because it is proven that uh, with self-isolation and increased social distancing, we are being told to practice, we would consume more. So for families that have been locked in now, uh, children are not in school, uh, the houses are filled up uh, because families can't even move. We would generate, we would consume more and then generate more waste. How, how practicable is this? And when you look at the recycling culture that we have, uh, would you say it is at par as what it should be? Well, you're very correct. Our recycling culture is at very low. But, like I always say, that um, in every situation, we can take the positive at it. Um, now, because we're going to be at home, and what you're saying is right, that we, we tell, we're possibly going to generate more uh, waste at home. And that is why all the stakeholders within that space need to be involved and then speak to people, more advocacy, to the residents to only use what they need. And then even at that, they can create um, a little space where they can keep their recyclables. You talked about reusing. How viable is that when most of what we create and generate are single-use plastic, pet bottles and the likes? And that's what's even blocking most of our drainages and canals. The last time we had cholera and flood outbreak in Lagos was because of these canals were blocked by single-use plastic. How do we do reuse? Okay, it's, it's come back to the education, advocacy, and awareness um, to the people. 
if we, we are talking about the single-use plastic like the pet bottles, if you use pet bottle now, you don't just throw it, you can keep it and then reuse it for other use, rinse it and use it. A lot of people use it. Even some people sell it as, as well. You can reuse it by using it for other um, activities in the home or keep it for recycling rather than just dumping it. Well, uh, stay with us. We do have some breaking news uh, just coming in. Uh, the Supreme Court has dismissed the application of the All Progressives Congress, that's the APC, seeking to review the judgment on Zamfara governorship election. The Apex Court says the application was a gross abuse of court, frivolous and grossly vexatious. It awarded two million naira cost against the APC to be paid to, to the respondents. Mm. Now, the Apex Court, had in an earlier judgment, nullified the victory of the APC in Zafra governorship, national and state assembly elections for not conducting a valid primary. He ordered the Independent National Electoral Commission to issue the certificate of return to the candidate of the political party with the next highest vote in the election. Consequently, the People's Democratic Party candidate, Mohamed Matawali, was sworn in as governor. Well, there you have it, breaking news. Uh, Nigeria's Supreme Court has dismissed the application by the APC uh, to nullify those elections in Zamfara State, where the PDP has uh, actually been be sworn in. Governor yeah. Matawale was sworn in. And that's as a result of the primaries conducted by the uh, APC. You know, we cannot reiterate this enough, that the political parties, the politicians, they do mm. have a role to play in deepening our democracy. Yes, yes. And, and, and they seem to be le lesson, learning these lessons hard Lesson hardly. learned. They the, had the, the two judgments, we see how they went. The first one, the creating an antecedents for this one, uh, we see how the when the the, the uh, Justice Amina Age made a bigger financial slam mm -hmm. on the lawyers as regards that, but this time they're lucky it's just two million they're <laughs> going to part with. But this should show you a lot. Mm. It should also show that even if the lawyers want to prove a case on the side of the politicians, the politicians should should try to ensure that elections. Elections should only be the mechanism at bringing people into power, mm -hmm. not the Supreme Court. All of this started cascading down with the case of Hopus Adima. And everybody said, you know what? Emeka Ahedi Oha said, uh, I would try it in the Supreme Court. Everybody started trying things out in the Supreme Court. Uh, but this has taught all of mm. us a lesson. We'll go to a quick break. We'll come back to Femi Doadi Oki on this, and we'll still talk more about waste and coronavirus and environmental sustainability. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Morning Show here on the Rise News. Just some uh, news coming. Let's follow up on that breaking news. Uh, the Supreme Court has dismissed the application of the All Progressives Congress seeking to review the judgment on Zamfara governorship election. The Apex Court says the application was a gross abuse of court, frivolous, and grossly vexatious. It then awarded two million naira cost against the APC to be paid to the respondents. The Apex Court had in an earlier judgment nullified the victory of the APC in the Zamfara governorship, national and state assembly elections for not conducting a valid primary. It ordered the Independent National Electoral Commission to issue the certificate of return to the candidate of the political party with the next highest vote in the election. Consequently, the People's Democratic Party candidate, Mohamed Matawale, was sworn in as governor. So. You recall before the general elections, uh, the, the electoral body, INEC, had said clearly that the, a the APC in Zamfara did not hold any primaries. Valid. Then we got that injunction for them to be fielded yeah. in the elections. Valid. And then all this cascaded to this moment. But a lot of people will have said, a lot of people will be saying that the APC should have known better, that uh, Senior Advocates of Nigeria, Legal Silk, Robert Clark should know better that. The Supreme Court, number one, will not upturn itself. And concerning the Zamfara case, they'll tell you to a large extent, there's no case there, mm -hmm. that the internal wrangling of the APC was their greatest undoing. Exactly. And they should take it in good faith. Because when you look at the prayers, a lot of people tell you that it is consequent upon the wranglings they had. Mm -hmm. And the implosion came from within. Yes. Senator Kabu Marafa led the implosion. Was a member of the party, he forfeited it. He didn't come back to the Senate, despite because this hurricane that blew the ABC in Zafara State affected Kabir Marafa too. So he didn't come back. Everything all went to the PDP. But the APC should have known better and they should have known how to cut their code according to their side. They don't seem to be learning these lessons. I mean, we saw this in River State uh, in Zamfara. 
even in Imo, yeah. it was almost at that point where they had two different candidates yes. uh, with the former governor, Richard Okorocha, and then his son-in-law uh, having another political party, kind being the flag bearer. Uh, I, I don't think that the APC has learned enough lessons from what we're seeing. We only hope we only that hope they will learn. All of this is coming vis-a-vis -vis the wrangling going on at the leadership. But the, the national big, chairman. The big, yeah, the national chairman. The big question is who will succeed him? Who will succeed him leading up to the next election? Because politicking has started for the next election. As soon as all this coronavirus thing goes out, then there's going to be the next politicking process. Who will succeed him? Perhaps that is even far. In his home state of Edo, uh, Edo State, South, South Nigeria, uh, I think that would be the litmus test for him, for him. as he faces uh, all so of these controversies. Uh, with those ele the elections coming up in a couple of months. So he does have the work if, cut if out If they will him. not be postponed because of coronavirus. But once all of this settles out, it's going to be the next couple of political months. But one thing is, all of this will lead up to 2023. Will APC be able to stand the test of time? A lot of watchers mm -hmm. have said, how will the APC fare after President Muhammad Buhari? Uh, lots and of that's questions a big question. Indeed, for the ruling party here in Nigeria, the All Progressive Congress. Well, let's bring back our guest, uh, Dr. Femi Dewa Degoke, uh, a chartered waste and environmental sustainability consultant, talking about the impact of coronavirus on the environment. Thank you so much for staying with us. Um, let me ask you as we wrap up, we've talked about the benefits of coronavirus on the environment, which is perhaps the only silver lining we would see, talking about uh, clearer skies, uh, emissions being reduced, uh, climate change taken seriously. I mean, COVID-19 is showing us that we can do something about COVID, uh, climate change. We can reduce those emissions. But when we bring it down to Nigeria here, uh, do you think that these benefits, you talked about hand-washing culture, uh, but beyond that, are we going to see any benefits of coronavirus on, an, on our environment? And then how do we sustain that even after COVID-19 is over? Okay. Yeah. After um, the COVID-19 is over, I hope we get over it on time. Uh, I think one of the benefits, apart from the personal hygiene, is going to be environmental health. Our environmental health will be taken more serious our public health as well will be taken more serious. Um, all the um, health centers will be, I'm sure now, we, we will understand the need for them. And on climate change, we'll now understand that we can actually cut down on several things that we've taken for granted before. Real quickly, it's good you talked about that on climate change, but a lot of people will still argue with you uh, that it's so easy to be part of, you know, the Paris Agreement and the likes. Uh, but they'll tell you real quickly that those countries that are pushing for this climate change narrative uh, are countries that have been able to develop their economy. But for us, it's difficult. I mean, Jack Ma could send face masks and kits from China because China has been able to enjoy robust manufacturing at the same time polluting the environment. But Nigeria, we can't hardly produce that because we are not manufacturing. So when are we going to make, get to our manufacturing phase? So a lot of people bring in the political narrative to this. What do you say to all of that? Yeah, we might say that Nigeria, we're not a uh, manufacturing nation yet. We're not, but we are contributing in one way or the other to climate change. Uh, I know that Nigeria has been flaying gas for as, as long as I've been born. And we've been, um, uh, we've been mining illegally in several places as well. And then we don't even have a proper uh, waste management uh, system where we do open dump and uh, we just burn as well. So all these give emission. So we cannot say we're not, but what uh, the climate change uh, agreement is saying is we as a developing nation, we shouldn't make the mistake that other developed nations had made, uh, which is, is to reduce our own contribution uh, and imbibe um, clean technology. So it, it, it's not stopping us from developing. And there is even other uh, financial benefit if you're going to uh, take on clean technology to develop your uh, manufacturing industry. So it's just that Nigeria, we've not taken full advantage of all these opportunities to develop. Uh, one of the greatest problems we have in Nigeria is our infrastructural development in across all sectors. So. I think because of uh, for what is happening now, we need to do more, even locally. We need to think global and act local. 
quickly as we wrap up, uh, if you could give the advice to the government at this time, uh, what would be the top three priorities for them? My advice to government is we need to make sure our all levels of our government, from the local authority, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be from a top to bottom approach. It should be a bottom to top approach from the world level to local government to state and to federal. They should all be involved. There should be more advocacy. There should be more awareness. People in the local area should be involved because there, there's a myth that has been demystified now that uh, we are Africans, we can all have coronavirus. But obviously now we've seen that we have uh, the case on our hand to deal with. So for the people at the grassroots, they need the information more now, and then we need to put certain things in places for them not to, um, to contain this, uh, virus, the spread of the virus. A quick question. A couple of years ago, precisely during the time of uh, Olusegun Obasanjo, Nigeria launched its first satellite into the orbit. And the purpose of that satellite was to be able to, you know, have a geographical, you know, surveillance analysis of flood patterns and climate patterns and the likes. Has that satellite helped, you know, in ensuring that we have a safer environment and we protect our resources like pipelines and the likes of vandalization, you know, that can also pollute the environment? Do you know anything as regards the use of that satellite? Nightshot 1, it's called, if I remember correctly. Um, I'm not sure the satellite has worked as it was projected. and uh, I'm not even sure if it's still functioning. Thank you so much. Uh, we're leaving at that. Uh, Mr. Adegoke for coming on the morning show today. Much appreciated.